Hi, and welcome to Factaganda number seven. Okay, uh, this is coming right on the heels of our whopping Factaganda number six, so try not to get too excited. Alrighty, uh, today we want to talk about cosmology. What does cosmology have to do with evolution? Nothing, except that um, there's uh, this little theory, it's just a theory, uh, called intelligent design that continues to link cosmology with evolution. Evolution is concerned with how creatures evolve from simpler things. The interesting, or sometimes downside to it is that if, if you know, things started out as single-cell organisms, became multi-cell organisms, became mammals and birds and lizards, became us and everything around us. If you follow this backwards, it must lead to something, okay? And that's where we start getting into, I think this is where evolution really starts trotting on God's doorstep. Because at some point all of this backwards thinking uh, takes us to, you know, theory. Theory in probably the way that um, the religious types mean it when they say evolution is just a theory. The rest of evolution is not a theory. It's, it's, it's a fact. Evolution is a fact. The, the, the theory or the explanation of evolution as the origin of the species pretty much a fact um the explanation for abiogenesis as the origin of life is not part of evolution and what's worse since uh unfortunately the term the big bang is still out there um we have the same problem with cosmology where if everything is expanding then we can wind the clock back a little bit and there is a point where everything was right in the same singularity and uh and so if everything's expanding then where is expanding from okay um neither of these things are part of the actual uh science um abiogenesis and and or, or biogenesis, uh, or genesis, I guess, uh, whether you, whether you want to talk about the Bible or you want to talk about, uh, science, you know, I mean, we don't have a time machine. We can't go back and look and there's no fossil record when we're talking about, you know, single celled organisms and viruses only on the earth. Nothing. So this is going to be an extremely difficult um, question to answer, if it ever gets answered. So, um, and then the same thing for cosmology. And the, the thing is, is that uh, like every other question answered by creationism or intelligent design is that both, uh, both questions have the same answer. God, and uh, and pretty much every comedy show has poked fun at this one at some point or another. Yeah, you know, it's like, uh, what's, you know, what's this, you know, deep question of life of where we came from? God did it. You know, well, where does the sky come from? God did it. You know, um. Is that blueberry or cherry pie? God did it, you know, kind of thing. Frustrating. But now, what I wanted to explain, I didn't want to, like, hype on anything. Not any particular religion, certainly. Um, but what I wanted to get to is why science doesn't accept a lot of these sorts of answers. So, uh, let's start with Genesis, uh, the origin of life on this planet. Um, there are several ways of explaining it. Abiogenesis, where, you know, you get a, the right mix of chemicals together and a little bit of lightning, and ta-da, you have basic chemicals that could form replicators. And if you want to know what replicators are, then I suggest 
an incredible book by Richard Dawkins. Mm. It's called The Selfish Gene, and it, it pretty much lays it completely out on the line from the very beginning to how these replicators might have evolved. Um, and by the way, for those of you who are into the internet, although he didn't intend it to be used this way, Richard Dawkins in this book uh, came up with the term meme. Um, so, and I recommend it for absolutely everyone. Um, if you have an honest question about the origin of life and how we evolved um, morals and, and whatnot, this is the book for you, okay? Um, and if you've got a bunch of snipey little snide re remarks, he's heard them all uh, anyway, and you're not going to hit him with anything new. Don't bother. Um, so, uh, but getting back to things, getting back to the, these origins. All right, so one of them is abiogenesis. Another one is a popular theory of, um, you know, panspermia. We, we were, you know, some other planet evolved um, life and, you know, got to a bacterial stage and then a big rock hit it and some rock hit, you know, and that asteroid hit us and voila, we got, um, well, inseminated <laughs> by another planet. Uh, another popular one is aliens. You know, some aliens came down and, and you can see a, a beautifully rendered graphic uh, production of this in the movie Prometheus, which um, I don't recommend at all. Oh, my goodness. It, they tried to cram way too many theories and, and it became a mess. So, um, so here's the thing. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to see where I'm going to go with this in a minute. In the case of abiogenesis, life happens here. Bing, done. Okay? It, it doesn't depend on anything else anywhere else. We could be the only thing in the universe, or this may be the way that life happens in most other planets. Not sure. Um, but it, 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 it has the least dependencies. When we start talking about panspermia, Okay, let's say Mars. Mars had life before we did, and then, you know, there was a cross-infusion of, uh, of uh, bugs. Then, how did Mars get life is the next question, the next obvious question. And that has to be answered, and probably we're talking about abiogenesis at Mars. And if it's aliens, then where did the aliens come from? How did they evolve? Where, what's their origin? And it comes back down to some form of abiogenesis. So when we when we move this to cosmology, uh, talking about intelligent design, then what we're talking about is uh, you know the Big Bang theory, or I guess it's the Big Soup theory right now. Um, involves, uh, and Lawrence Krauss is sort of the king on this one right now, of uh, how we could yeah. develop something from the nothingness that was there. And I don't claim to completely understand it, but the book is a great read. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so that something from nothing, you know, kind of hints at... Uh, you know, a, a great way of, of doing this in that the universe might be a considerably larger thing that we're talking about, and these little bubbles of soup that blow up and expand into universes might be happening kind of all the time, um, because time only exists within that realm. And once they, once they open up far enough and stretch them, they stretch out, and what's in between is the original nothing. So then, once that universe is expanded out beyond all measure, then it might pop up. On the other hand, if we have a god, it's just like the alien theory. If God did it, where did he come from? He's part of this universe. If, if, if anything can affect this universe, then it is part of this universe. And uh, maybe at some point I'll go into you know my theories of how God works and what his mind is like and things like that. But for now, we got to say, this is why science prefers the simpler explanations. Abiogenesis, the Big Bang Theory, as opposed to these other things, because it just takes one step out. All right? Have a good one. We'll catch you next time.